Flames Nation, what's up, everybody? Hope you're staying safe with uh, you and yours alongside Austin Lewis. <laughs> I'm Alan York. Austin, good catch up with you. And I was thinking back, soon to be junior, man. I mean, how fast has time flown by since you've been at Liberty? Uh, it's gone by crazy fast. I still remember our first interview together during the summer. It's, it's weird. Well, as we look at your picturesque setting in, there in Jonesboro, Tennessee, uh, how are things uh, at your house right now? They're going good. Uh, everybody's healthy. Um, not many cases where I'm from, which I'm from a real small area, so, but it's going good. Yeah, we were talking before we started recording. Uh, you're kind of on the back deck of your house. You have a pool back there. How long have you lived in this house? Uh, my whole life. I've lived in the same house for almost 20 years now. As we look back, uh, your backdrop there, beautiful setting. How far back does that land go uh, that y'all own? Uh, it goes back into the woods. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but it goes decently far back because uh, it used to be, we used to have a bunch of horses. Then as I got older and my dad started going to Iraq more often back in the day, we kind of those dwindled down and now we don't have any horses. So it's just a field now. You speak of your dad going to Iraq. Thank you for his service. What are some of the things he was involved with with that? You don't have to get to the nitty gritty, but uh, what are some of those uh, things that uh, you've experienced in your life with uh, your family like that? Um, well, I mean, it was on. I mean, he was in Iraq almost my whole like elementary, middle school life. So like it was, it was just, it was kind of normal for me to experience that, like him being gone for a while and then coming back. But I mean, it was fun. I thought it was the coolest thing ever when I was real young. Like it was, it was, it was, it was an experience. So he was in the armed forces. Um, he was a private contractor. He was a former army ranger and then okay. was a private contractor in Iraq. Which we look again, I'm just mesmerized by that background. What are some things you remember as a kid growing up playing in those woods? Um, just me and my friends going back there riding four wheelers when we got to the age that we could ride four wheelers. <laughs> and, uh, before that, just running around like seven, eight year olds, just going, leaving the house, going out there, running around back there in the woods, finding like climbing trees, just random stuff. It was just fun. It seemed like the funnest thing ever. Austin, we had Coach Dom on a couple of weeks ago. I know he's a vital part to this football program. How has he kept this team connected? And obviously, Coach Freeze, who we talked to a little bit ago today. Uh, but we'll start from the strength training standpoint. Um, what conversations have you had with Dom, and how has he connected this group? Um, well, I, me personally, I talk to Dom a lot, um, FaceTime, and all that. And every D-line meeting we have, uh, he always joins and just gives us, like, some guys he is wanting updates on, like, where they're at. Um, like, he wants them to FaceTime. Like, like we FaceTime each other. He checks in on us. Um, obviously, with, like, the rules and stuff, we have to be more um, diligent on doing that ourselves, checking in with him and stuff like that. But he's um, included himself sometimes in our D-line meetings, which is good, and just making sure – everybody's just staying on the right track. He's always checking on us, making sure we're okay if we need anything. And, uh, yeah, he's been really good with uh, staying on us and stuff. What have you been worried about from a strength standpoint, conditioning standpoint, or things you've worried about staying in shape, and how have you done that? Um, well, my situation, I was – like, I'm really blessed. Um, well, like I said earlier, when my dad was in Iraq, he didn't want to get a gym membership when he had come back for a month or two or however long because that would just be a waste of money so he invested in some he we basically have a gym in our garage mm. so i have everything i need down there to train and i have these big fields that i can run in and all that since they closed down parks and all that so i have a good situation here like it's kind of it's honestly like i'm just doing my workouts that i was doing up there but for some of the other guys that I've talked to, it's been really hard because all they've gotten to do is run. They haven't got to really touch weights. And it's kind of like that around the country. It kind of sucks. But um, I think it's something that we'll get through. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll turn out fine. Joined by junior defensive end Austin Lewis. I think, Austin, sports can be an escape for fans, 
for people that are really having a hard time with the coronavirus and our thoughts and prayers go out to those that have been affected by that. And as easy as it is for people just to watch this interview and to have uh, some hope that, you know, we'll, we'll be playing down the road. Do you kind of feel that uh, sports can be a good uh, outlet for people um, as they kind of go through their day? Oh yeah, for sure. I know for me, especially like as soon as I'm done with homework, if I don't, if I'm not, if it's not time for me to work out or whatever, I'll turn on sports. I'll watch anything <laughs> at this point. Like I've, I watched um, the other day, I watched a competitive electrician <laughs> competition where they were just wiring a house and see who could do it the fastest. Like it's just stuff like I, I it just, it definitely goes to show like this time shows how important sports are to our culture here in America and around the world. The more I've talked to you, Austin, I know you're a, a big time family guy and you're getting more time with your family than you normally may not because you're training and you'd be on campus at this point going through spring ball. Uh, how have, has it been, uh, being with the family more than normal and is that presented some challenges sometimes because I'm hearing stories that sometimes that can be and uh, there's good and bad with that no it's been great um, I definitely had to get used to the fact especially the other day when dad woke me up around like it was like 7 30 and I was having to help him load up four-wheeler into a truck pull out long, like working I had to get used to doing like like yard work again and like helping out like that, like kind of like I did in high school. And uh, that's really, I was talking to one of my friends and uh, I was just comparing it. It's kind of like high school all over again, but you don't go to school. Like you're home, you're under the, like you got to do what your parents say because you're under their roof in most cases. And uh, so it's just really like high school all over again with out having to go to school. So it, it's, how about classes? Um, I, I know, you know, obviously, when the, the virus hit, schools around the country moved everything online. Were most of your classes online anyway? Um, so, no, because I'm, I'm not really a fan of online classes to begin with. So, when they got moved online, I had like two or three classes that are moved online. And it's actually been going fine. But, yeah, it was, it's weird. It's really weird having those meetings and stuff like that because you can't just raise your hand and ask the teacher a question face to face. Are you? Yeah, I went through the same thing a couple of years ago getting my master's. Every one of them was online, so there is a learning curve for sure. You still studying sport management? I am, yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Currently, what what have been some of those online classes you've had to you're having to get adjusted to? Um, definitely American literature. Um, because the way they changed uh, English classes at Liberty, they do the eight week and then eight week, like it's like a quarter now. Yeah. And so it's a lot of, uh, it's moving fast. Like you read Mark Twain one week and then Emily Dickinson the next week. And it's just like, it's just going very fast. But um, I have a very good teacher. Most of the teachers at Liberty are very good. But my teacher, especially, um, I've had her since English 101. So that that really helps out having to do that with with that. Austin, as we were talking to Coach Dom a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about the the responsibility of the student athletes because these workouts are voluntary, and you kind of have to push yourself a little bit more to get through them because there's no coach physically there, you know, telling you to do these things. What responsibility do you think student athletes have, regardless of sport, during this time of quarantine and how important is it for them to get these workouts in for when you are able to get back together there's not much of a learning curve i mean it's gonna be i mean it's that's that's insanely important i mean even if all they do is is push-ups if that's all we do push-ups or run around our yard to stay in shape just whatever you could possibly do to do what helps because i mean there's going to be some teams where um, they aren't trying to encourage as much to stay in shape and stuff, and they're all frazzled and stuff. But we're blessed with the strength coaches and staff and Coach Freeze that we have to encourage us to do whatever we can to the best of our abilities. And um, we have a very motivated group from top to bottom. Everybody on the team is motivated to play. 
So I think um, it's going to be real, real good when we come back. I know we've been having some side meetings about the new renovations of the Liberty Football Center. Uh, how, how much were you able to kind of get a sneak peek before we had to leave school? And what are you looking forward to most about getting in that uh, new building? Um, I actually, I got to, I got to see the full thing because I had a, like a week before spring break, a couple of us had a photo shoot with a pond. Okay. So I got to go in there and that was the first time I ever went in there. And, uh, it was, it, anyway, that was awesome. It was just like the locker room. Obviously we've seen that, but just everything is so nice and, uh, it's just great. And I'm excited for everybody to for us to actually use it and utilize what the university has done for us. Rumor has it, Austin, uh, you're being required to be the first one to get their haircut in the new barbershop in there. Is that true or false? I haven't heard that yet. No. Nobody's told me that yet. That hasn't. Yeah. I'm I don't joking. know. I'm I don't. <laughs> uh, update us again. Last time you got a, got a chop. When was that? Uh, freshman year of high school. Yeah. That's the last time I cut my hair. How many people ask you about that week to week on your own campus? A lot, especially when I first got there. When I was a freshman, it was all the time. But yeah, that was like going through a recruiting process, like everything that was frequently asked questions. When's the last time I had a haircut or something yeah. like that? It's just, I don't know. It's just something I did. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just sticking with it. No, it's all good. Does your... Chin strap. I, mean, I played football, and chin straps need to be comfortable. In your helmet, do you, how how do you navigate through the hair and the beard to, to make it comfortable? Or is it well, after I, you, you go through it, it's it's second nature to you? Well, I have uh, with my hair. I just I I wet it before every game, and then slick it back so it goes right on. But my beard, I actually wear a chin strap. But not many people realize this, but my chin strap is one of the old school cloth ones. Is it really? I yeah, I wear a cloth. I wear okay. a cloth chin strap that has two holes in it, and yeah. I pull my beard through the holes. Okay. And uh, and they thought I was crazy when I asked for it. The equipment did, uh, people did, but it's. I mean, it works. It's comfortable because regular chin straps with my beard kind of it was kind of irritating. So I was just like, I'm just gonna go old school with a leather chin strap. There you go. There yeah. you go. Um, when you look at. Uh, kind of the state we're in right now. Um, I, I'm always curious to kind of pull the the curtain back on student athletes and it, kind of who their good buddies are. And who, who would you say daily, I don't know, maybe a couple times a day you communicate with on this team from a from a teammate standpoint? Who who are some of those guys? Um, definitely Ralph. Oh, yeah. Um, I talk to Ralph every single day. Good. Yeah, it's like uh, he's like my bro- my uh, my big brother. Uh, we uh, I talked to him every day. We were playing Xbox last night. Me, him, and my dad, and his little brother, all the way back in Latvia. Oh, wow. We were all playing Xbox. And, yeah, I talked to him daily, and uh, talked to Braden Monday pretty frequently. And uh, Jesse, I mean, I talk- he's not on the team anymore, but I talked to him a lot. And uh, yeah, Braden, he's from. Western North Carolina. You're from Eastern Tennessee. Did, did you did you know about him at all? Maybe when you were going through the recruiting process, had you started hearing his name? And again, he's a couple of years younger than you. But or when did you start hearing about Braden? And do you think the proximity of your hometowns uh, helped y'all form a, a bond? Maybe that maybe you don't have with some other teammates. Oh yeah, um, I I heard about, I started hearing about Braden the summer. I- to liberty okay because that's when i remember actually he reminded me because i forgot about it he came to a camp uh for turner gill and um he pulled or tore his hamstring and he kept wanting to do the camp and coach singletary gave me the task to watch him and put him through individual drills myself Okay. And then give an assessment from my standpoint as a freshman who's never played a college football game on Braden Monday. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't realize it was Braden until literally like last football season. And he reminded me about it. And I was like, oh, but uh, yeah, that's so like I remember putting him through the drills and I just remember him. And I said, where are you from? He said, um, I forgot the name of his town, but it's right outside Asheville. He said, yeah. it's right outside Asheville. I was like, Asheville's about 45 minutes from where I'm from. 
And uh, so that kind of started then. And I mean, obviously, like the West Carolina mountains, East Tennessee mountains is its own culture. Like, and uh, yeah. I knew about Braden Monday probably that summer because he started blowing up. He got offers by Florida. He started getting big offers. And I would see him on the news sometimes because we, my news channel covers his part of North Carolina. And uh, yeah, I just remember uh, he's a he's a good kid. So uh, I can see you being a scout down the road now with you analyzing I mean, all the talent. <laughs> well, I mean, Braden, and when he came, he was like, I asked him, I was like, how old are you? He's like, I'm going to junior high school. And I was like, what? Because I thought he was going to be, I thought he was about to say he's like maybe a junior college kid because he was he was pretty dang large. And uh, for a high schooler, and uh, he just went through everything, did everything right the first time. And I was like, okay, this kid's going to be pretty good. And, uh, yeah, he's a great kid. I love that kid. Austin, I want you to break down this for me. Uh, last week, maybe a week and a half ago, I saw Coach Johnson post a video I had not seen yet of the team waiting in the tunnel in Orlando to come on the field for the Cure Bowl. And you guys were chanting Red Bull. And I thought it was really, really cool. Got me kind of geeked up to go play. And so we got a picture of Keytrail Clark and put a sponsor post out a couple of days ago. And all I put was Red Bull. And so SJ Tui was asking me yesterday, hey, why are, why are we posting defensive guys with Red Bull? And I'm like, well, all I saw was the story or this video of the team in the tunnel, and I, I it couldn't differentiate between offense or defense chanting Red Ball. What, what is Red Ball? Is that the first time y'all did it before the Cure Bowl? And what, what does it mean? Well, Red Ball is a drill we do every day. It's an offensive drill for tempo. So they, but the defense has to do it. So it's exhausting. And so, so, okay, that's what that's what SJ has told me verbatim what you just said in the last 15 seconds. So, your yeah. stories are matching up here. So, what else to it? So, like, it's exhausting for the defense. It's like eight plays or so, just straight going down the field. You have our um, equipment managers placing balls down so they don't have to worry about getting the ball. They just run straight up to the ball, hike it, keep going. And uh, yeah, it's really tiring. But um, got to the point where Ralph last season just started yelling red ball. Like he was like wanting to do it. And uh, everybody else started yelling red ball. And then one day, I forgot who we were playing. I think it was Buffalo. And uh, we just started chanting like Ralph and Jesse and them and uh, Vincent Elefante started chanting red ball in the tunnel. And then everybody started chanting red ball. And it kind of started. It was fun. So it that's, could be an encompassing offense and defensive team-wide thing, kind of a, a, a band of brothers, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but yeah, so like it started at the D-line, Ralph just joking about it. He was like, let's do red ball. He's like, I want to do red ball. And then he started yelling it, and then everybody else started yelling it at Buffalo. And then, All right, well, maybe the fans will pick up on it, and we might have started a tradition here. Who knows? Maybe. All right. Um, as we wrap things up here, Austin, um, any words for the fans that might be tuning in of like, hey, we're still working hard. We can't wait to get on the field. And any type of circle the wagon type message you have for the fans as they get ready for this season, which I know we all want to get here sooner than later. Uh, well, I mean, well, I know for a fact that every single one of us are doing something, whatever it is whatever they could possibly do to get better and to continue striving for this season. I know the coaches are working harder than ever right now, recruiting, uh, meeting with us, getting ready, game plan and all that. Trent staff, everything's going as good as it can. Like the greatest possibility known is what's happening right now. Like everything's running very smooth. Everybody's working hard, um, eating, all that. So the biggest thing is just like, it's not, I mean, it's just like something that happens. Like this is unpredictable, right? So um, best thing is, is for all of our athletes, keep their heads up, which I think they've done a good job at. And our fans just uh, stay anxious and excited because it's going to be a great game against Virginia Tech.